Am I an a-hole for choosing Funko Pops over my wife? I know everyone's gonna think this is fake, but trust me when I say this is an actual situation that I'm going through. So for some explanation, I've been collecting Funko Pops way before I even met my wife. Buying Funko Pops started off as just a small interest, but quickly became a passion of mine. Since my first time buying a Funko Pop six years ago, I've stocked up thousands of these figures. So now about my relationship. Two years ago, I met my soon-to-be wife. From the very beginning of the relationship, she was well aware of my Funko Pop collection and was well aware that at the time I was spending a few hundred bucks monthly in order to keep expanding my collection. She was perfectly fine with this, by the way. In fact, she would buy Funko Pops for me for my birthday and for Christmas. However, about a week ago, we got into a huge fight over my spending on Funko Pops. I will admit, these past few months I have been dropping about $500 a month on Funko figures. But in my opinion, it was not financially tanking. Do, do you mean it? I wasn't? No. Uh, considering me and my wife have pretty decent jobs. I don't want to state what those jobs are for privacy reasons. Anyway, she was telling me that I needed to stop the Funko Pop collecting for a long time or at least cut down my Funko spending to three Funko Pops per month. In my opinion, that is so ridiculous. Considering how limited I would be in my choice of Funko Pops, I tried to explain to her how much I enjoy collecting these figures and how much it means to me. She then started yelling that we were going to go into debt because of the amount of money that I've been spending on the Funko Pops and I started to show her how she was completely overreacting and that there is no way we could possibly go into debt from this. After some more screaming, she locked herself in our room and I had to sleep on the couch that night. I really did not feel bad at all because I knew she was overreacting. When I woke up in the morning, she told me that she was going to stay at her sister's house until we could sort things out. I honestly couldn't believe she was going this far. I tried my best to convince her to stay, but again, she kept stating that I need to stop the Funko collecting for a long time. That isn't an option for me, because again, she is completely overreacting and it is in no way affecting us financially. A few days ago, I get a call from her. She tells me that I need to choose ultimatum. Either I stop the Funko Pop collecting or we're getting a divorce. I started telling her how ridiculous she was because she obviously was being ridiculous. After two years, she was just willing to throw away our marriage over my passion. She was pretty much sobbing at this point and I finally just told her that I'm not going to let her get in the way of my passion. I still haven't gotten the divorce papers, but I'm expecting them soon. So am I the a-hole for choosing Funko Pops over my wife? Again, I'm very passionate about them, and I think it's ridiculous for someone to try and take that away from me when it is in no way, shape, or form hurting them on my bing bong. Some of the comments in response to this reads, You are the asshole. If you aren't a troll in a dungeon, then you should learn that relationships takes compromise. And she was willing to compromise by asking you to limit your collecting. If you aren't willing to consider it, then marry your collection and get over trying to have human connections because that collection is obviously more important. If you love Funko Pops so much, then why don't you marry them? Is what the next one effectively says. <laughs> you are the asshole, says Riot Girl Heather. Dude, just know. If little vinyl figures are more important than a living, breathing human, she needs to divorce you because you are obviously still a child. 
she either needs to find a grown-up or you need to grow up and learn how to compromise how to compromise how to compromise you're gonna hear some really passionate takes out of females you know on these uh entries but i'm gonna give you a take that perhaps is not so popular because it's a little more down to earth it's a little more reasonable i'm not gonna take anybody's side here relationships are all about compromise of that there can be no argument but this bitch got into it knowing what she was getting into this dude collects funko pop so hard that it's blowing the world off of its hinges you know what i mean you know the world is a door and and his funko pop collecting is blowing it off of the hinges now is he being a little you know i want to say rigid when it comes to a uh, request for him to limit his spending as it pertains to these figures perhaps it's not like she told him to flat out stop collecting them all together but i hear where this dude is coming from when he says you know, if it's not truly affecting them financially, then I, I'm not sure why this is a big deal. And what's funny again is that she would have known going in that this is particularly something that he was passionate about. This seems a little bit more diehard than your your average, oh, I'm into Sonic the Hedgehog or, or Five Nights at Freddy's like type of autism. This is like... What do you mean you have a Funko Pop collection? $500 a month? You probably can't process something like that. You know? Your average gamer is willing maybe on a good month to drop probably $60 on like three games. Throw $50 on top of that with microtransactions and yeah, you're spending around $300 a, a month. But $500 a month on little plastic figures is funny. It's funny because what can we do but laugh at this dude? You know, who is choosing these really ugly little plastic dudes. You know, as far as I'm concerned, Funko Pops are not. Eh, the beady eyes, that's what gets to me. You know, I like a Funko Pop that doesn't look like a Funko Pop. I've said that on plenty of occasions. There are a lot of Funko Pops that... Ah, let's not get into it. Let's not get into it. My point is this. There, There's points on both sides. And it is funny to point and laugh at this man who is choosing some plastic figures over a human being. But, you know, we all have our passions. And in the right light, all of our passions are fucking stupid and nerdy. You know, when I was growing up, all of the stupid ass comic book movies that are literally the things making the most money in the world right now, you'd be a friggin' nerd to have known anything about it. I remember what it was like when people were going outside. And the fact that I was jumping on a website and I knew anything about what MySpace was, you know, made me a fucking dork. But give it literally a year. Everybody on their phones. Check out my live journal. Check out my Zanga. Check out my Facebook. It's like, hey, man, a, month, a year ago, y'all was going crazy about this thing. You know, whatever we're into, we need to find somebody that, uh, I don't know, perhaps shares that interest to a certain extent. Am I taking the dude's side again? No. He needs to learn to compromise, and if she asked him or requested that he limit his spending, that's very different from her saying, hey, stop doing that altogether. You know, $500 to us seems like a crazy amount, but, you know, different different people have the different disposable amounts of income. And uh, I think those are key aspects of this story that have been left out. If we could know what they did for a living, or what their take home was, it would paint a very different picture. But I guess it's okay for everybody to just fold their arms and point and laugh right now. I've heard funnier stories, and to think that this was brought to my attention when it's so fucking weak! I'm sorry, shouldn't shake the mic like that. You know, I can't afford to drop $500 a month on a fucking microphone, what the fuck? What the fuck? I will catch you guys later, you know? A normal YouTuber would milk this uh, video until it's 10 minutes in length. I'm not going to do that. You know, that would be 40 extra seconds. What I will do is take the opportunity to wish you a wonderful day and hope you have an even better week and hope that whoever that you find yourself in the midst of, that they respect the things that you're into. And hopefully you don't go overboard. Hopefully you don't hurt other people with what you're doing. You know, hopefully you don't hurt other people with your mindsets. There's a lot of that going around. Don't shove your things down other people's throats. Don't har 
uh, harbor unnecessary or unrealistic expectations of other people. But in this context, yes, a relationship does require compromise. Two people need to come to an agreement. Sweet Jesus, I just thought I, uh, it was it was raining outside and I freaked out because I I was hanging up some uh, some bathroom mats that I had just washed. You know, that's right. That's the life I'm living. OK, I don't have five hundred dollars to just be buying mad bathroom mats and not worrying about it when I swap them out. This dude out here buying Funko Pops. Hey, Stripes, can you please plug in your mic and give me how you feel about all of this nonsense? I wish I knew this game. Wait, 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 wait. I think you're coming through the wrong microphone here. Let's give that another try. Did you just say that you wish you knew this guy? Yes. Why? Just because he uh, seems, you know, wealthy enough to afford a passion like this? Yeah, if he can bankroll Funko Pops, he could probably spare a few bucks. There are plenty of people who can throw $500 at something specific. It's just not, you know... It's just not something that is so, in my opinion, recreational, you know, because in in my opinion, say I had five hundred dollars to drop on something specific on a monthly basis. Maybe it was tied to a, a hobby where I'm getting up and I'm getting out. So it's kind of like fitness oriented and it's helping to keep me active. Maybe I'm investing in better equipment to make the things that I do uh, as far as a career is concerned or even a recreational hobby where but like maybe I'm t making music, you know, and I'm buying better equipment to enhance my sound so that overall I can produce a better quality thing. This just seems funny <laughs> because it's a figure, you know, and much like Dexter's Lab and RFB never removed from box, you're going to buy this fucking thing, put it on a shelf next to all the other fucking things you've bought. And soon you're going to be needing to worry about buying extra space to house slash display your museum of Funko Pops. So don't think I don't understand people roasting the dude. It's just like, man, whatever. I guess I read too many of these over the years. Or it's just like, ha 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 ha, whatever. <laughs> you know, they locked this post because everybody's like, of course you're the asshole. Do you not understand? This is a flesh and being living a person. Blah. Can we go to the Twitter? That's probably where the real comedy is. I'm doing it okay. without having Wait. even what? You didn't read it from Twitter? No, I didn't read the Twitter responses. Oh. Without having read this, Funko Pops? Uh, question mark, exclamation mark, question mark, exclamation mark. That is your interest? Exclamation mark, question mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. That you choose over a wife who loves you? Whoa, potential wife. And you'd know that if you read the damn thing, bitch. <laughs> now, somebody else says, my ex-husband got over his alcohol addiction by excessively purchasing $700 a month Air Jordans and comic books. He could not understand why this was so upsetting to me. Wait. He stopped drinking. He stopped he drinking to do something else and you still mad at him? God damn, ladies. Should he have just kept guzzling those bottles? Perhaps woke up dead one morning or maybe worse, jumped behind the wheel of a car? You know what I'm talking about? Should he have drunk until he knocked your ass around a little bit? You know what I'm talking about? God damn, one of these things hurts his wallet. One of those things hurts his body. Ladies, I, you know what? She got evil in her name, so we can't even be, you know, it's right on the package. Silly me. God damn, ladies. You know, I think you men are fucking pathetic. And I will never stop roasting y'all. Damn. Damn, baby. Now, Brian Santiago. Captain Ugly Font for his username. Can you say stuff like that? You better stop. Um, I hear you. Ask yourself about these symptoms of a collecting addiction. Oh, here we go. This is lame. <laughs> this is so lame. Oh, of course we cracking out this picture at a beanie baby. Uh, uh, okay, I'm done. We're done. Bye, 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 bye.